Good morning and welcome to Crossfire. Now, in the midst of the problems bedeviling the entity called Nigeria, the call for a restructuring of the nation of Nigeria has become even louder than it was first made by the fathers of Nigeria's politics. And I mean the late Dr. Namdi Ezekiwe, the late Tafawa Balewa, and the late Chief Obafemi Awolowo. Now, for easy understanding, the call to restructure Nigeria includes the call for a through sovereign national conference we have chosen representatives of the over 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria will come together to agree on how they want to exist hereafter. And the results of such national, such, sorry, the results of such national conference rather will then form the basis of all to be implemented to give rise to a just, equitable, dignified and glorified country or countries. Now the big question here today is, does Nigeria need restructuring? To answer this question and more, I am being joined by no other person than Engineer Martin Onovo. He is a former presidential aspirant under the National Conscious Party. Join me in welcoming him. You're welcome to Crossfire. Thank you very much. Now, the issue has been burning and, and is super hot. It's still trending everywhere. People are responding on social medias and even other media platforms saying, does Nigeria need restructuring? And the vice president of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, also very, you know, did lend his voice also on this matter, saying Nigeria doesn't need restructuring. What Nigeria needs is diversification. Although the Afani Ferry Group came out to say diversification is also a product of restructuring of the nation called Nigeria. But what's your take? Does Nigeria need restructuring? Well, we must uh, be very careful not to misrepresent uh, matters because okay. uh, the danger is that if you can't diagnose correctly you can't treat correctly okay. if you can't diagnose correctly especially medicine you can't treat correctly now the issue is what are the principal causes of the Nigerian predicament we agree with professor Chino Achebelit mm -hmm that it is the ineffective, incompetent, and corrupt leadership that has been the problem of Nigeria. Now, what Osiba just said, I have read the quote, is not what the media is reporting. What Osiba just really said was that restructuring was not going to solve the problem, which is correct. But if you look at some of the ethnic tensions here and there, the Agreed. issues that, oh no, why do we always have Agreed. a nothing as rep being represented you know, in the presidential elections? Why do we have this? Why do we have that? I mean, it's, it's part of the reason. And if you look at the, the call by the Niger Delta Avengers saying they need resource control. Resource control can only come effect when we have proper restructuring of the entity called Nigeria. No, that, that's not true. Uh, let me stop like this because otherwise uh, it might be difficult because this is a very complex issue. Okay. The principle I'm going to use to respond to this matter is if you can't diagnose correctly, you can't treat correctly. In 1960, after the pre-independence uh, conferences in London, we had an agreement. And Nigeria was established as a federation at independence in 1960 with three regions. That is what all the Nigerian people agreed to. Whether you were born or whether you were not born, you were represented. Mm -hmm. All the political parties in Nigeria agreed to that. So that's our agreement. We started like that. And then suddenly, people in the Midwest area claimed that they were marginalized in the Western region. Historical development. Mm -hmm. Then we had a Midwest region. So it became possible to carve out segments from the three original regions. Yeah. Good. Subsequently, other people said, oh, we too were marginalized. We went to 12 states. Also because of the conflict of the war. Political advantage mm -hmm. for Nigeria. Thereafter, we moved to 19 states. More people said, yes, even in this 12-state structure, I am marginalized. We went to a 12-state structure. We went to 19. Today, we're 36 plus Abuja. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, if we assume 
that the result of the Lancaster conferences, pre-independence conferences were wrong, and that the three regions were wrong. Then when we corrected it by going to four regions, we should have got the right answer. But we didn't, because we misdiagnosed. Yeah. Then some other people said, no, we do, we are marginalized. We had 12 states. Did that solve the problem? No, because that is the wrong diagnosis. Check every major national issue. The corrupt political elite goes to the media, proposes a false diagnosis. The media, which is also partly owned by them, runs with it. The Nigerian people are misled. The Nigerian people conclude that that's the right solution. We implement it, and we still fail. OK, well, we have to go on a quick commercial break. But by the time we return in the part of the program, you will let us know the correct problem or the right diagnosis. Thank you. And then we also will look at some of the past national conferences held in Nigeria Thank and you. see if there's any this government can adopt or if there's any that can be reserved for later. Well, we'll go on a short break now. When we return, it's still Crossfire. Stick around. You're welcome back, and this is The Crossfire. My name is Isha Magaini, and yes, you're watching us live on Wazobia Max UH57. I still have engineer Martin Onovo in the studio, and we're talking about the restructuring of Nigeria. Should we restructure, or should we not restructure? So you were saying? Yes, I was talking about misdiagnosis mm -hmm. and the history of the Nigerian predicament, which are foundational. Now, this same situation occurred in the power sector. When we misdiagnosed, the problem in the power sector and claim that privatization was the solution. Since we privatized, things have got worse. It is the same thing we have done in politics. And this political elite keep coming up with deceitful fads, F-A-D, to mislead the people. And the media keeps celebrating these deceitful fads. So the whole country gets continuously misled. Okay, so what do you think we should do now to correct some of the abnormalities in the country today without maybe calling for another you know, national conference. Because if, if I also want us to take a look at some of the national conferences here. Now, uh, in 1994, 1995, a constitutional conference was convoked by the late head of state, General Sani Abacha. In 2014, we also had one convoked by the former president, the immediate former president, former president, good luck, Jonathan. And these two conferences had some seemingly important or interesting recommendations. Now. In 2014, the National Conference recommended the creation of 18 states, 18 new states. In 2005, the NPRC conference also said that the 36 state structure was too expensive. Good. And the situation will become worse if implemented. Now, in 1994, 1995 conference, it actually recommended the creation of 20 states. But now, in 2016, agitations are being made that some states are being marginalized. They need creation of additional states, just like the 2014, you know, recommendation. But also, in 2016, we have seen also that most states are broke, if I can use that word, if they're broke. They don't have money to even pay salaries of civil servants in those states. Now, but in the midst of some of these economic problems and, conference and, you know, and, and challenges we're facing, the people want a national conference. But it's obvious that this government doesn't believe in you know, calling a new national conference will solve the problem. Now, do you think, which of these recommendations do you think the government should go by? Please, please. The people have been sold a dummy, please. Let me make myself clear. This is a fundamental national problem. Do not limit the discussion to the sponsored solutions of the corrupt and ineffective political elite. Don't limit the solutions. Okay. I need to establish a proper diagnosis so that the Nigerian people can make the right decision and not be misled. Okay, go ahead and give us And not be misled by, by a political elite that controls the media. We must put it in context because people don't understand why this thing seems so complicated. Let's break it apart and simplify it so that everybody can understand. Okay, go ahead and do that. Now, the two conferences you referred to, mm -hmm. with all due Three. respect to the convenance and to the participants, were illegitimate, democratically illegitimate. Who elected those people? They were appointed by the government of the day. Mm -hmm. So democratically, they were illegitimate. All three? Democratically, they were illegitimate. 
which were the legitimate conferences. I started with the foundational one, the pre-independence conferences in London. That was legitimate. Now, and I have recounted the political development for you to see the cost of this deliberate misdiagnosis of the national question. That's the cost. The cost is that a problem we could have solved in 1966. We are still dealing with it in 2016 because we misdiagnosed the problem. Okay. Why did we misdiagnose the problem? Because the leading factions of the illegitimate, corrupt, and ineffective political elite have sponsored solutions in quote that are completely wrong and calculated to benefit their political interests. The only way the Nigerian people can see clearly is if we establish why these previous diagnoses were wrong before we give our own solution. Because I can still simply jump to our own solution. But it will be disconnected. We can infer corruption. That, that's one. one. As one that, of the that, that's one. You can infer that correctly. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, and corruption, you know, Nigerian people think about corruption as financial corruption. I'm not sure people think that forging a certificate is corrupt. I'm not sure. But well, that's by the way. <clears throat> now, because we deliberately misdiagnose the problem, we get the wrong solution. And I have established that, at least, everybody agrees. The mere fact that you're calling now for another solution, after your 10 previous solutions failed, confirmed the 10 previous solutions were wrong. So that shouldn't be a matter for argument, whether the okay. previous solutions were wrong. If they were right, the problem would have disappeared. So at least everybody needs to agree that the previous solutions were wrong. Now, if the previous solutions were wrong, why do you want to go further with another wrong solution? Simply, Nigeria was founded, like I said, as a federation. Unfortunately, the military took power, and the military cannot run in federation, because military command must be unitary. So you, can't, so you can't blame the military for having establishing the unitary degree. Now, agreed that we have had this period of military government in our history. There's nothing wrong with that. Military governments have been successful elsewhere. Even in Nigeria, part, partially more successful than, uh, than uh, even the civilian governments we have had so far. Because if you look at the infrastructure development of Nigeria from 1960 to today, you see that the military governments account for a lot more. That's the hard fact, because what you have is not a democracy. But that's another issue. <laughs> that's another issue. Now, the military came and wrote a unitary decree and imposed a unitary government because the command structure of the military requires a unitary system. Mm -hmm. So we ran a unitary system as long as we had military governments. Then in 1978-79, critical, constituent assembly. Nigeria was renegotiated. And we agreed, wrongly again. Why was it wrong again? Misdiagnosis. Sponsored by the corrupt, elite. ineffective political elite. And we said the problem with Nigeria was the parliamentary system. With the old democracy was parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. We said the Americans are successful because of presidential system. Let us go to presidential system. Then the majority agreed. Even if it was wrong, mm -hmm. it was democratic. At least, there's no perfect democracy. And we went to presidential. Now, see where presidential system has led us to. So the question is not parliamentary or presidential, principally. Mm -hmm. The question is not 12 states or 19 states, because we have tried all those options. The question is that every society, every society that is human, I'm not talking about animal society. The most critical element is the value system. Because even your laws are a reflection of your values. That's true. Even your laws. Principally. Uh -huh. So when you start talking about rule of law, the laws are established based on the values. No system, let me repeat myself, without any fear of equivocation, no system, social, economic, or political will work without integrity. That is the problem in Nigeria.
Hmm. So whether you interpret this as corruption, okay. whether you interpret it as rigging an election, there is no system in this world that will work without integrity. And that is what is lacking in Nigeria. And that's why every solution fails, because it's the wrong solution. Now, can you, can you blame that on the um, provisions of the Constitution no. itself? No, no. Are you, are you saying that, uh, that the Constitution we have today is not faulty in itself, because it has been faulted on several locations? Thank you. As giving breath also to some of the corrupt tendencies we see in our society. Have you complied with that Constitution? That's the other way to look at to it. To a large extent. I don't think so. For example, that Constitution requires federal character. Okay. Somebody's making appointments in total disregard with impunity, as if he has conquered Nigeria. Excuse me, and there's no repressor. There's no repressor. Sorry. Let me go back further. Okay, wait, no. Before, if you don't allow me to do this, no, before, this matter will not be clear. Before, before you go back further now, the Constitution of Nigeria makes provision for a federal government. Correct. And, but also... It also defines that federal, because there's no standard federal government that is universally ap 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 applied across 200 countries now, in the world. Now, also, in the call It for, is defined in details in that Constitution. Yeah, true. But in the call for resource control also, as provided in the Constitution, everything above the earth belongs to the state, and everything below the earth belongs to the federal government. Correct. Now, we can say also that that in itself vitiates the principle, the true principle no, of no, true federalism, no, true or false. No, no, please, please, please. Federalism, the basis of federalism is federating units. True. Which in every federation, known to man, since the almighty God created Adam, is varied according to the preferences of the people. In politics, the will of the people is the supreme norm, particularly in a democracy. So the, what is happening to us is that because of the level of corruption, illiteracy, and ignorance, even the people shouting democracy don't know the meaning of democracy. Most of them shouting democracy, they are tyrants. They are bigots. Democracy really means that in the majority is in error. Error prevails. They don't want to hear that, but that is the meaning of democracy. It is what the majority says. So it doesn't matter if you're right and you're a minority. The majority will have its way. That is the division of democracy. Now, I wanted to go further back to clarify the matter. Because if we knew, if we know where we're coming from, it becomes easier for us to know where we're going. It becomes easier. These are the major political errors we have made. And to correct them, is to first admit this universal principle that no system works without integrity. Okay. Now, why is Nigeria so fundamentally corrupt? You'll be surprised at my answer. We have looked at it. We have reviewed with all major schools of political thought in Nigeria. The British established colonial master corruption in Nigeria and institutionalized it. And since then, we, as a people, have not been able to get rid of it because those who benefited from the British corruption defend it. What do I mean? Harold Smith is a British colonial officer. He's over 80 right now. He has publicly confessed that the British government rigged the first Republic elections. That's available to anybody who wants to. So when you're talking about rigging of 2015 elections, it's not this is how it has been. <laughs> This is how it has been. I'm quoting Harold Smith. Go, go Google it. They rigged the election. Because they, and they rigged the population. And population is still a major dispute in Nigeria. That's true. Lagos is, everybody knows Lagos is the most populous state in the whole country. True. True. But officially it is not. <laughs> so how do you build anything on this criminal foundation? Okay, now you, you're talking about, you saying basically in essence now that we do not need restructuring. No. So, no, you no, want no. us, you, you, you remember that no, I said, no, you said, you said we need to rebuild what, restore me. integrity Good. and rebuild our value chain. Good. Now, Good. In, in, now, look at where we are today under this administration. If this administration, if they are listening, if the principal agents of this administration, Ad they, administration they, they rather are listening. listening. They always listen. What do you think? Or what are the steps? Are you what steps are you preferring rather that they should follow in restoring integrity and value? Yaradua, may his soul rest in peace. I'm talking about Omar Musa Yaradua. 
late president of Nigeria. May he so rest in peace again. The third time, may he so rest in peace. Good man. Yaradua was really little power. Like all of them. And the worst one was the 2015. But do you know the difference? He admitted. He took the podium. <laughs> and he said, the election that brought me to power is flawed. That is how you correct systems. That is the hallmark of integrity in Nigeria's political development. No, no, no. I need, I need to understand because you said, yes, we know, we all watched the event that he came, he mounted the podium and said that that election was flawed. But the issue is, is it about making statements no. or about setting the institutions to no. correct no. such abnormalities? He did that. You see, he went subsequently to establish the electoral election reform led by Justice Muhammad Waiz. Now, for example, that electoral reform committee, led by the former Chief Justice of Nigeria, mm -hmm. made several recommendations, including that the president, who is a partisan politician, should not appoint the chairman of INEC. Since Yaradua, has that been implemented? So, please, as long as we remain dishonest, majorly dishonest as a people, we cannot find the solution because the dishonesty will lead to a misdiagnosis. A misdiagnosis will lead to the wrong corrective actions. The wrong corrective actions will lead to a continuation of the problem. This is simple logic. It is clear to anybody, even a child. Diagnose your problem rightly. If you have dysentery and you treat malaria, the dysentery will not go. True. That is what is happening to Nigeria. And the evidence is clear. Because that's why you people are looking for another solution. After your 20 informal solutions failed. Because they are wrong. But the people have the vote at the end of the no, day. The people's will no, rather should prevail. The people's will have never prevailed. Starting from 1960, Harold Smith has confessed. I was not born in 1960. But the confession is there. But when you also... But they rig the elections, they rig the population. But when you also take a, a proper census of the voice of the street, and I t I'm talking about average Nigerians out mm -hmm. there, they say that they want restructuring. Oh, you're not listening. They want to be able to participate you're not and listening. lend their voices to thank some you. of the solutions going on in the country today. My dear sister, thank you very much. Let me repeat myself. It is important that you hear me so that you, you don't misrepresent me. I said that the illegitimate, ineffective, and corrupt factions of the political elite in Nigeria sponsor false solutions. And the media promotes these solutions. And that has happened more than 20 times in our political history. And these wrong solutions are now falsely attributed to the people, to the followers. Now, when they are applied, they fail because they are wrong. What is the evidence that the solution is right? Mm -hmm. If a doctor gives you a medicine and your symptoms continue, that's the evidence that the medicine is wrong. Or the diagnosis, rather, is wrong. Or the diagnosis is wrong. So we cannot be arguing whether the diagnosis we have had has been wrong because the mere fact that we are looking for the correct diagnosis now means it was wrong. And we knew it was wrong. Okay, now let's marry what you're saying now together with what the Vice President of Nigeria said. Good. That we do not need restructuring, we need diversification. No, that's now, not what he said. <laughs> okay, we need diversification. No, let, let me tell you what he said. It's says. part of it, part no. of the solution Wait. to move Nigeria to the next level. Wait, my sister, if you change one word in a sentence of 10 words, the meaning mm -hmm. can change. For example, is and was. Was is past, is is present. True. And so you can change the entire meaning. Because if I used is and you use was, people will know that the problem is current. So let me say what I read that the vice president said. We read different things. And if you check them in different media, you see that they're not exactly the same thing. Okay. I don't know what you people call that in your professional practice. I'm not a journalist. <laughs> but you see the same vice president's statement being reported differently by different people. What I read that the vice president said was that the problem was not diversifying. It was not a restructuring. restructuring. That, and he said that even if we restructure, the problem will continue. That's what he said. So he's not saying that restructuring is a bad thing. It is the media now that turned it that the man said restructuring is a bad thing. The same way they want to turn now that I said restructuring is a bad thing. That's not the issue. 
Is the structure of Nigerian right? No. But I told you that Nigeria was founded on a false foundation. Now, if you have a false foundation, you can correct it. Now, why have we not corrected it? Because an illegitimate, ineffective, and corrupt political elite has deliberately continued to sponsor false solutions because they are benefiting okay. from this dysfunctionality. It's that simple. It's, it's no question I haven't answered. What do I, why do I, what do I agree with the vice president on? I think it's confusing economic diversification mm -hmm. with a political problem. But I agree with him that the principal problem is not restructuring. For example, who stole Delta State people's money? It was a Delta man. I know his name. His name is James Ibori. He stole the money of Delta State people. And he's in prison. Who stole the money of Edo State people? I know his name. He was convicted in the Lagos uh, Federal High Court. His name is Lucky Munedium. So don't, it's not about restructuring. You restructure to my family and I'm stealing the money. <laughs> Will that provide power? No. Is the structure right? The structure was deliberately tilted to protect the political establishment imposed. Will you say immunity also is part of political immunity? No. Is immunity part of that is problem? critical to political stability okay, and national <laughs> development. All right, then. We'll go on this short break, and when we return, we'll also look at diversification and revenue allocation, marrying it also together with some of the previous recommendations by the other national, sovereign national conferences made. We'll go on this short break, and when we return, it's the year 57, Mazobia Max Crossfire. We'll be right back. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.